The next part of our branding, and this is really important, and if there's one thing that you want to really invest your time and energy into learning, it's how to read people. Now, everybody communicates a little bit differently. There are people they want to do all the talking, and then there are homeowners that will do no talking. They want you to come in and put on a presentation, and they want you to show them what you're capable of doing. And everybody communicates a little bit differently. There are people that are very direct that will say, I want this, 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 and this. And there are people that, I don't really know what I want. And, you know, you do this for a living. And can you come in and just kind of clean my house? And, and then you have to be able to communicate with all the different types of people. And so become an expert communicator is my next branding tip. You got to read books. You got to go to seminars. You got to do whatever you got to do to learn to read the nuances between the words. Okay. There are things that people will tell you and they're not true. Like for example, let's say that you've just gotten a huge fight with your spouse and then somebody walks through the room and they go, how are you? And you're like, oh, I'm fine. No, you're not fine. You just got in a huge ginormous fight, right? But you say, I'm fine. If someone took you at face value that you were fine, they would think that, oh, hey, this is just weird energy going on right now, right? So there's all kinds of weird energy going on with families, with families, kids, with people arguing with each other, people losing jobs, people being in debt. They don't have the money to pay the house cleaner. There's all kinds of stuff that happens in people's lives that when you get to clean their house, there's weird energy going on, okay? It happens all the time. And you might have a customer that you've gotten along famously with so far, and you get there today and they're in a really bad mood. You have to be able to read that mood and you have to know when to back off and you have to know when to say, you know what, this is very uncharacteristic of this person. And so although they're like nitpicking at me today, this is not my customer's norm. This is not how they normally treat me. There's something else going on. When you learn how to read a customer, and this is one of the biggest keys to success in your business, and it becomes part of your brand and it becomes a giant part of your brand, okay? When people know that you understand and they know that you care, sometimes you might say the wrong thing, but they're going to overlook it because they understand the intention of your heart. They understand where you're coming from. And I can't tell you how many times our company has been hired because people say, you guys get me. You guys understand me. And that is so important because maybe we don't. Maybe we don't really understand, but we're trying to listen between the lines. You have to be able to sense when something's wrong. You have to be able to sense when a customer is lying to you. You have to be able to sense when something is not exactly what meets the eye. And then you have to be able to figure out how to navigate that in a way, going back to a previous branding technique, not to shame the customer or to embarrass them or to make them feel inadequate in any way. So for example, it might even be a payment issue and a payment is late or the check bounces or something like that. Okay. You have to understand stuff happens, stuff happens. It could be that a spouse decided that they were going to leave and run off and they emptied the bank account. And maybe the spouse that's at home that paid you did not know that. And so now they write you a check and the check bounces and you can't come back and go, Oh, that's theft of services. And then like get all up in their business and get upset and shame them and embarrass them when it's an honest mistake. And they didn't know. I can't tell you how many non-payments have come down to an honest mistake of somebody forgetting to transfer money to a bank account or their spouse ran off with all the money or they got fired from their job and they just paid the last of their bills and maybe a check to them bounced, which bounced the money they were supposed to give you. There are a lot of reasons why somebody might default on a payment. Okay. But if you can kind of read between those lines, then you can go back and say, Oh my goodness, something happened here. I know this is out of character for you. And I just want to make sure everything is okay. What you've done is you've given them power back to them to say, oh my goodness, I can't believe this happened. Please let me give you my credit card or let me just, and you, that's a perfect opportunity for you to say, I'll tell you what, let's just put it on file. And that way we'll just charge your credit card from here on out so that something like this doesn't happen again. Would that be okay? And you can work that out with the customer so that they're not embarrassed and they're not shamed. Because I've seen so many situations where immature house cleaners will get all high and mighty and they're like, I worked for that money and you're going to give it to me or whatever. I know the house cleaner needs the money, but how it ends up is in small claims court where you have the house cleaner now badgering the homeowner who had every intention of paying and something malfunctioned on their end and they were against their wishes. 
the check bounced or something happened, right? It's usually a very valid reason. I don't know a lot of homeowners that hire house cleaners just to cheat them out of cleaning. I, I don't, I personally don't know a lot of people that do that. It's probably happened one or two times in a 25 year career, right? It, it, it just doesn't happen to us. And so if it's happening to you a lot, then please look at your systems because maybe something is different that you're doing 